a legendary running back from the 1970s, Johnny Musso. How are you, my friend? Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. All right, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good. Just enjoying the season so far. I mean, it, it's uh, it's it's one of those uh, great years in Alabama football, and you know what Nick Saban's been able to do with this football team is pretty amazing. I think it's maybe his best job of coaching. Uh, he's done a wonderful job bringing this team together. I thought, uh, you know, the first of the year with uh, the number of people we lost, it was going to be a little bit of a rebuilding year, but that, I guess he, he doesn't know what those things are down there. He just reloads, so I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm very pleased with the character and the way this team has really come together. They got must have great leadership there. Well, and I think that is something that I'd love to be able to sort of talk with you about. Obviously, you were a great leader here at the University of Alabama. Uh, but, but looking at this team, you've got a workhorse in Derrick Henry, who is a super back, and if, if the voting goes his way, he has a solid game tomorrow. He's probably going to win the Heisman Trophy. But so far, we've asked him about it for probably a month and a half now. And every time you bring up the Heisman Trophy, it, in a way it almost irritates him because he doesn't want any individual recognition. How much is it when your your best player, one of your best players on the team, deflects all the individual attention away from him and right back to the team? Well, he's a, he's a good leader. He's a good team player, and your teammates respect that. Uh, believe me, he wants to win the Heisman Trophy, but it's not, um, he's not – it's not his number one focus. It'll be a, it'll be a, a result of the team playing together and him doing his part because he's a big part of the, the team and it's necessary for him to do well for the team to do well. It'll happen naturally. Uh, it's really refreshing. I really respect the way he's um, he's handled himself and the way he he raises he rises uh, to the occasion. His his he plays best against the best uh, opposition, and so when it's required of him the most, he steps forward and, and performs. So I think that's a great trait for a great competitor, and he uh, he deserves uh, all the recognition he gets, but I love how he keeps it within the framework of how the team's playing and what the team needs, and it's, uh, it's a really good trait for an individual, and it's, uh, it's really kind of the tradition of Alabama really that it's a team game and it's all about it's all about the team performing and winning championships. You know when you look at Derrick Henry from a running back perspective, um, what what stands out to you with his skill set from from a former former running back here at the University of Alabama? How how do you analyze his skills? What makes him so good? Well he's a really different He's a different back. He, um, he's, he he really is. Most running backs take choppy, small steps. They able to cut quickly that way and keep their balance. And uh, he covers just a lot of ground uh, quick because he he doesn't chop his steps much. He he, he is more of a uh, Eric Dickerson or even. A, a, uh, Gale Center that runs, you know, long strides. They co- they gobble up a lot of grass, a lot of yardage quickly. Way, you know, it's hard to to be real nimble, but he's a graceful runner with, you know, that that really runs in a real different style. It's real unique. Uh, it's real. It's 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 a great style of running. Um, but he's he's done that extremely well. He's he's patient. He. He's got great timing of when to make his cuts, and uh, he he sees the field, and he looks he looks beyond the you know the thing that's right the the problem right in front of him, and sees the big picture, and I think that's why he makes such long runs. He's you know able to 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 take it all the way because of that. So he's got got great skills, and he's big, so you know he's durable, and so that helps him runs a lot between tackles, and his body's able to absorb a lot of that, uh, a lot of punishment. So he's a great player. 
We are talking to Johnny Musso right now inside the game here in Tuscaloosa as we broadcast live our coverage presented by the Soup Store on the campus of the University of Alabama here on Tide 99.1. Johnny, when, when we look at uh, Derrick Henry in that final game against uh, for the regular season against Auburn, I, I hate to bring this up, but he broke your record. Uh, you had a record of 42 carries in a game against Auburn in 1970. That record stood for, well, I mean, almost 40 years. Uh, Derrick Henry had 46 carries. What a job he did against the Auburn Tigers, and he broke an Iron Bowl rushing record of 271 yards, 46 carries. I mean, it, it, that's an amazing number, and I know that you, you could speak for that record itself. Well, it I think that may be the last one. If I still had one, that would have probably been the last one. No, nope, you were at the top of that yeah. one, 42, because I, I saw it in the publication, and I was sitting on the sidelines, and I said, Johnny's got that record at 42, yeah. and it, it kept getting close, and they handed it off the football 14 straight times to Derrick Henry, uh, and he, and he wow. got it at 46. Yeah. Well, he, uh, you know, Alabama doesn't uh, – and pad statistics, and they didn't give him the ball 46 times because they wanted to, wanted him to uh, have improve his prospects to win the Heisman. They did because they're trying to they trying to win a game, and they're shorthanded at the position right now. So, uh, you know, good for him as he did it the way he did it, and uh, runs in the row to to really um, put the game away. So um, that's that's a uh, it says a lot about his conditioning and his uh, desire and the durability. He's uh, he's a great player, Johnny. I, I'm 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 looking at your credentials, and obviously one of the great players in Alabama history. Nick Saban said something last night on his coach's show, and I've always heard the great ones say this. I remember John Hanna on my program. He said the very same thing. He was talking about winning, and he said, you know, no doubt, I love to win, but I hate to lose. To be honest with you, I hate to lose more than I really like to win. Is that what motivates the great ones, like Coach Bryant, like yourself, like the Leroy Jordan who we had on yesterday? Is it the losing part that sometimes you don't want to lose and the fear of losing? is sometimes the work ethic that's developed in, in these great players and great coaches? Well, there's no question. Fear of failure is a great motivating force. There's no question about that. And um, I think it's two sides of the, you know, the same coin. You, you love to win. You hate to lose. And, you know, losing hurts. And I, I will say that the, the, the losses that you suffered that were, you know, the disappointments of those tend to, to stick with you longer than the wins, that's for sure. Uh, so there is a, there is a, um, there's a lot to be said for, you know, for hating to lose. And uh, but but you know, truly, uh, I think if you you hate to lose and and that becomes your motivating force, you you're tight and you're defensive, and I I don't think that's really the best way to play. I think you you know, personally, you don't want to. You don't want to lose, but you know you, you think of I think more positive than that. You you want to do your best. You want to perform well under every circumstance. And when it gets down to plays that matter, you want to. Those are the plays you want to be involved in, and you want to have an impact on. So, uh, yeah, there's a there's a. You can look at it on the negative side, and that's true. That's a great motivating force. But I think the, the opposite side is probably a little stronger for me. You know, for those of us, and I was born in 78, uh, but I've had a chance to stay connected with Alabama tradition uh, because of featuring former players and learn about this university and to learn about the tradition and, and the, you know, the respect that we have, obviously, for the football players, but, you know, the history of walking down the walk of champions that takes you minutes and minutes and minutes uh, to stare at the championships. When I look at Coach Bryant, for those of us who may not remember him the way that you did, can you share with us maybe the greatest lesson that Coach Bryant sort of taught you of playing under him at the University of Alabama? Well, you know, there, it's really hard to put into a word or a, a single thing. 
uh, I think it was just, you know, being in it and staying in it and not quitting, you know, that there, there was, it was hard at Alabama, uh, particularly under Coach Bryant. The rules were different. You had a lot of scholarships. Uh, you didn't, one scholarship wasn't so valuable because they had so many. So if, uh, if you quit, it was not a big deal. And, uh, so he made it really hard for the players and, and if you stuck around for four years, uh, you learned a lot, it, but I think you really understood the value of seeing it through and and not giving up and until you know getting up the next day and going in and you know you're hurt or you didn't feel like it or you're tired, but you just did the next thing. You just stuck it out, and you know at the end of the day, I mean that's so much in life that just requires diligence it requires tenacity and uh working through things uh so i don't know it just the whole experience of um uh, of staying after it uh and i guess the the one one other thing that coach bryant teach taught uh, very well was that you never you're always representing someone you don't you don't go on the field just representing yourself you you're representing uh, the coaches that so they're on the sidelines. You represent your teammates. You represent the student body. You represent your your family that's in, in you know the stadium. You you, re- you represent the high school you came from and the coaches there. You there's just there's so you bear a lot of responsibility when you walk on the field wearing a red jersey and representing Alabama. Or whoever you're representing, but um, but you never you don't stop representing when you leave the field either. When you walk into a restaurant or when you get on the airplane to do go somewhere else, you you still you're not invisible. You're still representing uh, the people that put their energy and time into making you who you are. And uh, I think that's been uh, uh, something that's helped me carry. Uh, myself through life, uh, just the realization that uh, the people that built into my life, I need to represent them well where I came from. And uh, and I think I think Alabama teaches that well. I think Coach Saban is a, really teaches these young men life lessons. He's doing a lot more than just teaching the X and those football. He does that very well, but I think he's also... I think his real heart desire is to develop people, not just football players. And I think that shows in the character of the players that, that he recruits and develops.